third game of a best of three. There is no guessing now. No ifs, ands, or buts. No contingencies, no asterisks, no alternatives. On this Sunday evening, no second chances. For Lake Superior State and St. Thomas, their seasons all come down to this. Is the season over or are the semifinals soon to arrive? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. For one of these two teams, it will be good night to their 2023-24 campaign. For the other, a triumphant and dramatic success that gets them one step closer to lifting the Mason Cup two weeks from now. Mike Gallagher with you. Welcome to our show tonight. And if you've been with us all weekend long, you have heard it time and time again. It seemed like this one was always going to go to a Game 3. Lake Superior State's inconsistent consistency this year, or consistent inconsistency, whatever you'd like to term it. The overall series history and recent season history that saw these two teams split their only two games played against each other this year. The fact that despite five spots separating them in the standings, only five points did. Much more evenly matched than a typical 2-7 matchup. And we sit on this Sunday night tied at a game apiece. So where will the most important game of the three go? Any way to predict it? Well, only two of the eight series since the CCHA came back together in the 2021-22 season have gone to three games. The high seed won once, the low seed won once. The home team won once, the away team won once. A team from Minnesota won once, a team from outside Minnesota won once. So you get the picture, not much to be gleaned from the small sample size we've got from the CCHA. So let's look at these two individually. For this situation, Lake State is certainly the more seasoned team. They've got four CCHA championships to their credit from their first iteration of the league. Three national championships as well. And as recently as their last NCAA tournament appearance in 2021, they got hot at the right time, plowing through the WCHA postseason with four straight wins. But all their major success, those conference and national championships, all came more than 30 years ago. In that 2021 tournament appearance, that didn't have any Game 3s along the way. In fact, you have to go back 17 years, seven Game 3s, to find their last victory in a Game 3 of a best of three. Seven consecutive losses, last victory in 2007 when they were the eight seed against number nine Ferris State. Three one goal games, the Lakers coming out on the right end of two of them. So if that's a data piece that compels you, it's there. Certainly though, has to be presented with the caveat that only one of those data points within that set that we're talking about has come post COVID. So for this group that's currently gathered in royal blue and gold, there's not a lot from that piece of information that may affect the outcome tonight. Pretty incredible though, that it's been that long nonetheless. 17 years without a game three win, seven straight defeats. As for St. Thomas, a much more straightforward answer. They had never been to a game three at the division one level before tonight. As a matter of fact, had never won a division one postseason game before this weekend. Two sweeps in two years, one at the hands of Mankato when the Mavericks went to the frozen four in 2021-22. The other last year against Michigan Tech, the number two seed. The Tommies have checked one of those notes off this weekend, winning their first division one postseason game in their first hosting opportunity during their brief time at the D1 level. Level. Will their first game three and their first postseason series victory follow? Or will Lake State break their 17-year run of game three futility? What a compelling night it is. Puck drop is just a few minutes away. We're back with it after these messages on Flow Sports. Three, two, one, go. This is Scout Mason. Alongside of me is Sophie Camilli. Division one sports. Ready replay, effect, Rolling. Division one opportunity. The lob to Parker Bjorkman. My goodness. St. Thomas built. Student sustained. There's never been a better time to be a Tommy. Tap into your potential with Tommy Athletic Productions. At Supply Chain Solutions, our employees are our true value. In the heart of the ever-changing supply chain industry, we know it's our team that propels us forward. As a proud partner of Tommy Athletics, we're excited to welcome St. Thomas students into our family. At Supply Chain Solutions, we're more than colleagues. Working together and celebrating together is our recipe for excellence. Join our team and discover a rewarding journey together.
I believe one really can change the world by helping business be more transparent, inclusive, sustainable, and globally minded. It's why I became a GHR Fellow, a unique full tuition scholarship at St. Thomas with an immersive four-year undergrad experience designed to develop principled business leaders for the common good. I'm Himani. We're GHR Fellows, and we're, we're Tommy's. Tommy's. Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. The best health care is there in ways big and small. There when we most and least expect it. We may not see it, but we feel it. It lets us know we're not in this alone. Everyone deserves a healthcare partner who never quits. One who's there for what matters. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Mike Gallagher back with you, folks. It's game time. The third and final of the series between Lake Superior State out for the upset and to knock off the number two seed in the CCHA postseason. And St. Thomas looking to defend their home ice and come away with their first Division I postseason series victory. Sam Ekstrom with period one. Nick Walsh, keys to the game. Well, I think uh, just like last night, I think St. Thomas would behoove themselves to get an early start and an early goal. Uh, obviously, in game one, they fell behind. They battled throughout. They were, were struggled to get back into the game and ultimately fell 4-1. to one. Last night, that early goal really seemed to excite them, motivate them, and they were able to carry that forward throughout the rest of the game. I think Rico Blase talked about it nicely about the penalties. You know, we saw what we saw last night. There is that possibility where Lake Superior State might try to goad them into something as a retaliatory. So be smart, just like I said last night, be smart. Don't do anything you're going to regret throughout the rest of the game. And play your game. You know, it's game three. Do what you've done best throughout the season. Move the puck, work around it, play as a team. That's how they can move on to the second round. Tommy's in the home whites from right to left. The Lakers in blue and gold from left to right. Ethan Langenanger, tending goal for the Lakers. Aaron Trotter for the Tommies. Game three's underway, and the Tommies go after the puck in their own zone. Roped around the boards to the point and kept in by Ross Rolison. Sent toward the net from the point, and Trotter makes the game's first save a relatively easy one. On our Tom Borshov, the co-captain who was involved in the fracas to end last night as he got tangled up with Matthew Gleason as the buzzer sounded following an intense third period. There were five penalties called after the buzzer. No misconducts though, everybody eligible to play tonight. And the Lakers win a clean faceoff in the offensive zone. Evan Bushy brought it to the corner, passes to Dawson Tritt. Evan Bushy and Tritt there battling, and Quinton Pepper comes away with it for the Tommies and out to the neutral area. Swatted in on goal by Jared Westcott, the number two point man in the CCHA with 35 points. Brought back out by Chase Cheslock, upended by Dawson Tritt, but brought in by Tim Piowski into the zone. Piowski. Had it poked away, and Jared Westcott, with his good speed, slashes to the left and shoots it wide. It hits off the inboards, and Luke Manning ratchets up the attack to freshman Cole Miller. Down the left wing, shot, and a paddle saved by Langenanger. Pro cop in the corner, ripped away by Blanchett, kept in by Miller, and then poked out toward the red line. O'Neill will try to bring it back in. He got tripped up, no call. Langenanger settling it down. Tommy Steele and try to center, but the pass was altered by Schweitzer, or rather Batchelder, I should say. There's a pass for Prokop, left circle, good move around. Batchelder moves in, shoots high, and swatted down. No hand pass as O'Neill played it. He got dumped by Batchelder. Gower tries to keep the zone. 
kicks it along. It's cleared by the Lakers after a good chance for the Tommies. We have seen three different plays in which Lake Superior State players have lost their stick as the result of their own uh, physicality. We are seeing a little bit more physical play from Lake Superior State the first two minutes. The captain, Lucas Wallen, puts one on net, squeezed under the armpit of Langenanger. Wallen coming off a three-point game, flashing his speed with two minutes into this one. And even more importantly, Wallen was the benefactor of one of those late collisions last night. He came off the ice, did not come in for the remainder of the game. I talked to him for just a minute after the game, asked if he was okay. He said he felt fine, and he looks fine so far here tonight. Lucas Wallen, as tough as they come, he's played every game this season. A captain for a reason. Off the draw in the Lakers zone, the Lakers possess the puck. They've been surpassed by Bemidji as the number one scoring team in the conference, now sitting just behind them at number two, and a centering pass for Blanchett. Knocked away by Lucas Wallen and retrieved here by Mason Poolman, who had an assist yesterday. Up to Gleason at neutral, Ross Rollison brought it back in. Rollison comes from hockey bloodline. There's Wallen bringing it across with Malmquist. Drop pass, Gleason! Put an unfurl on the shot, and the Lakers repossess. Poked away from Luke Lewandowski and up for Wallen at the line. Left for Malmquist, goes off the corner wall. To the far side, Borshov mixes it up with Manning, who drags it along the half wall. Schweitzer is there, Borshov battling, so is Manning. Kept in the zone briefly and then out. Venagoni will pass it ahead. Stopping on a dime, Regan Milburn. Venagoni tried to tip on net. The two newcomers to the lineup unable to capitalize. And really good play by Cole Miller. We've talked about it throughout the series as we've got a whistle for offsides. We've talked about it throughout the series. Lake Superior State has been able to get behind the St. Thomas defense a couple of times on Friday that resulted in goals. Nice job of Cole Miller really retreating back to get in good position, not allowing an easy rush opportunity for Lake Superior State. At neutralize a faceoff won by Pro Cop, the number three faceoff man in the conference. Tommies have dominated on the dot in the first two games. Abrahamson for the Tommies, swatting to Leyland, who had a helper yesterday. Into the corner, Evan Bushy from his own zone. Dangerous pass to the middle of the ice. It is taken by Kungle and then coughed up to Prokop. Tommy's back with it. They'll have to retreat to their own end. Abrahamson will restart the rush from behind Aaron Trotter. Tobias Abrahamson out of Sweden. The freshman at six foot four. Puck handling and passing to Gower. Now Gower will quarterback the rush from behind the net. Runs against Westcott, then drops it back for Abrahamson, who turned it over to Brandon Piku, the freshman to the corner. Piku, defending rookie of the week in the CCHA, he turned it over to Luke Leyland, then got his stick in the way of a pass and deflected it deep into the Lakers' end. Just a little overlap, the pass on its way to O'Neill. He would have had an opportunity, but just couldn't reach out to get that pass. Tommy's the early leaders in shots, 3-2 to two, as Batchelder tries. Save, Trotter, rebound, jetted out front and left the zone. Right back in comes Batchelder out of Eden Prairie. Batchelder, one of four Minnesotans on their roster, now to the point. Behind, past Piku, held on to by Teleguin in the near corner for Lake State. Crunched by Sofo, coming off a big goal yesterday. Now Batchelder twists one wide of the net, hits the corner wall. Hindman down to the corner, poked away by Luke Manning, a nominee for best defensive forward in the CCHA. Metz will drift it in, and the Tommies will change. Rico Blasi said in our pregame they'll be monitoring the ice time and the shifts a little more carefully as these teams playing a third consecutive day for the first time this year. Stamina will be a big decider in this one. No score, four and a half minutes played. Racing after it is Roy. Has the zone for Lake State. Roy, rim of the left circle. Tough angle shot saved by Aaron Trotter, who's four for four with 14.30 to go in the first. Last two shots there, a good example of what St. Thomas has to do. The last shot previous to that one, there was a rebound opportunity, but Sheslock was able to sweep it away. That time, Trotter did not allow a rebound opportunity when 
Lake Superior State has not been able to score on those rush opportunities. It's usually been on a rebound opportunity, so important for the Tommies to limit those as well. Tommies were held to 10 shots through two periods in game one and then hung 35 on the Lakers yesterday, a totally different team. There's a pile up behind the play in the corner. It's going to be tough to draw a penalty, though, in this game as the Tommies are offside at the line. We did see plenty of them called in the third period yesterday with the scrums, a lot of offsetting penalties. But up until then, the officials let a lot go in this series. Yeah, if there's a penalty called tonight, they're going to earn it because that's kind of how we felt the first two games went. But in the third period yesterday, when things started to go sideways, we started to see more penalties called, including, as you mentioned, five of them after the last bell of the game. Poolman lobs one in for the Tommies, and they'll go to work on the forecheck. Leyland gets there. Luke Leyland, the sophomore, skating away from Bushy, veering in the near corner for the Tommies. Offensive zone. Leyland still on the puck, riding the wall, giving on back. It's centered by Prokop in the hands of Westcott. O'Neill was there, but was tied up in front of the net and didn't have a chance. Bushy hammers it in, Trotter settles it down, and Mason Poolman the stretch pass, intercepted by Schweitzer. A transfer from Colorado College out of Benilde St. Margaret's. Long pass down ice, icing on the Lakers, 13.25 to go in a scoreless first in Mendota Heights. Good pace so far between these two teams, neither of them showing that the game is going to be slower due to any sort of fatigue concerns. So. At least the first 6.35 have been a little more upbeat. More similar to game two than game one for St. Thomas, at least, because they've continued to be able to keep that stamina so far. Lakers a seven-win improvement off of last year's team. The Tommies a four-win improvement in year three of D1. J.D. Metz at neutral ice, banked ahead toward Luke Manning. Luke Manning fighting for the puck along with Metz. Luke Manning didn't score yesterday, but he was a man possessed all over the net. A 200-foot kind of game for the longest tenured Tommy. It's loose on the near side boards and picked up by the Lakers in transit. Three on two. Batchelder goes left wing. There's a follow-up pass to Hindman. Kungle keeps the zone off the ricochet. Gower intercepts behind the net, and he'll look up ice past the seven-minute mark of period one. Gower down to a knee, pops back up, stays with the puck as his teammates change. Tommies will race in after it. They average 2.6 goals per game, fifth in the CCHA in scoring. A turnover by Peters. Roy, the co-captain down the middle, brought it to the wall and swatted it along the boards. And no room for him to operate. Nice job again by the Tommy defense, cutting down the lane and not allowing the crease. Wall in left angle toward the corner. Kicked back out to Harrington, who's one on three in the zone. Harrington drop pass Roy. Roy, good deal to Bacos, who puts it on Trotter, and then gloved down by Gleason and out to center. And Poolman with the clear again, not allowing a rebound. Past the eight-minute mark, there's a steal by Wallen behind the net, but he couldn't get the puck on his stick. He'll feed Manning right dot, backhand off the side of the cage, gets his own miss. Luke Manning gliding, offensive zone, dislodged by Ross Rollison, and out to center ice. Off of Poolman, pops in the air vertically. Lewandowski over to Borshov out of Belarus. Borshov for Rollison, Woodbury native. Over to the near side, Lewandowski. Interrupted by Pepper, worked in behind the net. Trotter hustles back to his cage as the puck falls in front of him in the slot. Tommy's clear. Pepper at center. Flung in. Tommy's change again. No score. 11-11 to go in the first. Left side, Blanchett, the extra D. Goes behind. Peters got a stick on it. Tommy's have the puck. Up the wing comes Leyland. Leyland to O'Neill. O'Neill will deal it in deep to the corner. Tommy's go to work. Here's O'Neill. O'Neill with a tough angle shot. That hit the side of the cage once again. Another steal. Prokop goes across the alley and the puck flies in the crowd. Look out. 10.45 to go in the first. Zeros. 
If you listened to the broadcast last night, I talked uh, a few different times about the Tommy's ability to limit the time for Lake Superior State in the offensive zone, and that allows the Tommies to change a little more on their own schedule. So far, they've been doing a really good job of again, doing that same effort again. Short spurts for the Lakers inside the offensive zone. Fourth line out there for the Tommies, Jay Sofo, wrapped up by Kungle. Tritt brings it out of the zone to Poolman. Poolman flops it back in, but Kungle will play it. The freshman defenseman, one of 11 freshmen on this young Lake State roster, average age 22 and a half to start the year. Six tenths of a year younger on average than last year's team, which only won nine games as Piowski sends it off the tip of Langenanger's glove, off the window. Kungel got it behind his net. Approaching the 10 minute mark of the first, 0-0. This is Teleguin with speed, Bushy, a shot! That just missed the top left corner of the net. Held in the zone by Lake State. Batchelder to Ross Rollis and Batchelder open lie, a lane to shoot, save Trotter. And that sends us to our first timeout. Aaron Trotter, perfect so far. Nothing, nothing on the Tommy Sports Network from Learfield. for the Lakers out of the timeout back goes oh denied had a wide open net the defenseman and the forwards converging to save the day for the Tommies right off the draw Lakers still in the zone a team effort there to prevent the goal as Heinemann shoots in traffic Backos tried to tip it ended up in the far corner Harrington revolves behind the net he emerges on the near side boards Harrington whips it wide left and the Lakers look motivated coming out of the break. Harrington high scoring freshman. Bank to Rollis in left point. He'll fling it to the left corner and rimmed it around to the near side. Abrahamson from behind the net. Goes out right wing for the Tommies who get it out to center and get a partial change in. Right back in come the Lakers. Dawson Tritt. Tritt centers through Connor Milburn. Their scoring line on the ice. Hacked away from Milburn. Pepper will lift it to center, and the Tommies can breathe a little and get the rest of their skaters off. Probably the longest sustained offense that the Lakers have had maybe in the last two games when not on a power play. If we get another look at that Bacos try, I think we'll find that there was a Tommy, not Aaron Trotter, who saved that goal. Poolman at the blue line, brings it in, left wing. Westcott tying up the puck handler. Pepper will shuffle it in deep. Luke Manning trying to box out Westcott. 
Manning on the puck in the corner boards offensive zone. He'll center. A shot by Piowski. Didn't get too much mustard on it. Went wide left. Peters flips it for Manning. He'll operate from behind the cage once more. Luke Manning puts on the brakes, works on Blanchett. He'll center for the circle, and that's flipped out by Tritt on the clearance. Cole Miller whips the puck in, left corner. Tommy's back in after it. Clear to center. Carson Peters retrieves, and he'll do the same thing. Tommy's focused on getting pucks deep. O'Neal on the far half wall. Feed to the point, escapes Cole Miller, and Carson Peters will go on a chase. He'll flip it off the glass near side. Nate Schweitzer will play it deep in his own end. Over to Evan Bushy, the big defenseman from Thief. Now Luke Leyland to the blue line for Ryan O'Neill. O'Neill has Prokop going down the middle, tried to center. It was cleanly intercepted, and that's flung down for an icing on Lake State. 7.13 to go in the first, no score. And for Lake Superior State, this is probably the best they've played so far tonight in controlling this. If we go back to this initial play, here is Troner initially makes the save, and then it's the secondary shot that I think we're looking. I think that was Manning who fought off Bacos, who had, or Gower. It was Ethan Gower who saved the day. Trotter, I think, repelled the first shot, and the Tommies breathed a sigh of relief as a puck flies into the Lakers' bench with Damon Witten standing there, their head coach in his 10th season at Lake State. Michigan State grad signed a six-year extension after they made the tournament back in 2021. Neutral zone face-off, Tommy's win it. Tommy's over 50% on draws this season, while the Lakers are 59th in the nation. Malmquist's got to stick to it for the Tommies, but Lake State now giving it away. Lucas Wallen is brought down by Teleguin. Penalty, Lakers. Tommies to the power play. And we said it would be something that we would know about, and both refs raise their hand at the same time. Number 10, Lake Superior Mayor Hooking. So Hooking is the call. Both referees making the call at the exact same time. And there was a reason for it. Because he got hooked. And it was pretty obvious. Lakers fourth in the CCHA in penalty minutes per game. Tommy's had a power play goal last night. They've got 22 on the year. Tommy's seventh in the conference in power play percentage. Ethan Gower from the point goes to O'Neill left circle in front. Prokop backhand repelled. Plays in the corner. Noah Prokop had the power play goal yesterday and reportedly called his shot earlier in the day. He texted a coach and said, I'm going to do it on the power play. There's a centering pass by O'Neill. They score! Luke Leyland gives the Tommies the early edge in game three. We talked about the Tommies maybe needing to get out front early, and they have done just that as Leyland, the power play goal, his ninth goal of the season, and you see it here set up. Gower from the point, giving it to O'Neill. Quick pass right out in front, and Leyland right on the doorstep, beating Langenegger for the goal, and the Tommies are out in front. O'Neill, team leading, 19th assist. Gower with number 12. Leyland goal number nine. He has been a power play menace for the Tommies with six last year and now three this year. That's the co-lead for the team. And it comes at 13-33. Quick shot by Connor Milburn out of play. The Tommies strike first, and that's so important, Nick. They are 13-1-2 when scoring first this year. And by contrast, 8-17-1 is Lake Superior State when they trail first. And so uh, more often than not, Lake Superior State has fallen behind. And meanwhile, we've got a penalty on St. Thomas. Looks a like boarding. a boarding call. Tim Piowski to the box. And the Tommies will have to go to the kill. And we'll see the Lakers power play that is top ranked in the conference at 23.3 percent 
They do not technically have a power play goal in this series. 0 for 5, though they did score tenths of a second after a power play expired yesterday. We had a couple of power plays in this series where people have scored right at the end or just after. Shot on Trotter. He makes the first save of the kill, and the Tommies will get a clearance out through neutral. Tommy's power play goal yesterday, the, probably the best power play is we've got a whistle for high, high stick. sticking. Mm -hmm. I believe played with a high stick. So the faceoff, one of the cardinal sins on the power play, you don't want to take a faceoff in your own zone. You never want to ice the puck, and you never want to get called for something like that. So Lake Superior State will have a faceoff inside their own defensive zone. Tommies have only allowed a power play goal in three of the last eight. Over 78% on the kill this season. The faceoff is won by the Lakers, but in their own zone. 25 seconds gone in the power play. Outletted left wing to Dawson Tritt. Tommies lead by one. Five and a half to go in the first. Sent in hard by the Lakers. They'll chug after it. Tritt got it in the corner. A feed to Harrington on the left point. Cross ice pass, knocks the stick out of Gleason's hands. He'll go retrieve it. Rollison, meanwhile, near point. Over to Bacos. Has a goal in the first two games of the series. Harrington, right point. Down low, Bacos in the near corner. Bacos, Harrington. He'll weave his way back to Bacos. Shovels it toward the net, glances off Trotter. Under a minute to go in the power play. Zone held by Roy. Gleason pressuring. Cheslock now takes it in the corner, but Roy hangs on to possession. Back goes from behind the net. Back goes to Harrington. Harrington, rim of the right circle, shot. Kick saved by Trotter. Gorgeous. Gleason the clear with 38 to go on the power play. Dawson Tritt right on the doorstep, but Trotter anticipated that play coming and shifted that right pad over. Schweitzer, the drop to Westcott. Westcott speeds and passes for Bushy. Bushy is caught by Wallen up ahead for Malmquist. The two aggressors shorthanded. Malmquist and Wallen trying to make something happen. Wallen has it in the offensive corner. Moved it over where Schweitzer took it. Ten seconds left on the power play. Wallen now trying to recover, and it's intercepted by Malmquist at neutral. Wallen all over the place. Miller has the puck. Tommy's killed the power play pretty cleanly. Four minutes to go in the first period and a 1-0 lead. Yeah, just the one good opportunity by Tripp on the doorstep that Trotter turned away, but otherwise pretty well a clean slate there for the first power play opportunity for the Lakers. Tritt in off the tape of Peters. Behind the net, Peters on his backhand, rolls it on the boards. Pepper pokes it to Piowski. He's checked. On the boards by the bench. Piped back in by the Lakers behind Trotter. Left behind there for Peters. He threads the needle, a pass to Pepper. Stuck in his own point. It's kept in by the Lakers. Venagoni sent it down low. Regan Milburn over to Kungel. Hands it off to Venagoni, getting his first action of the series. Lewandowski Rister to the near side. Kungel, rim of the right circle. Kungel gliding. It's poked into the netting by Pepper. 3-10 to go in the first period. 1-0 St. Thomas. And as we start to get to the waning moments of this period, Tommy's with this 1-0 lead. It's really important that they maintain this lead into the final minutes of the period just so that they can go into this locker room with some positive momentum. They're playing well. The Lakers only six shots on goal. There's Piku, tight angle. That hit the post and then jetted out down the slot. One-timer Borshov gathered in by Trotter with 3.02 to go in the first. Lakers taking the mentality there. Any shot's a good shot. So a shot coming from the point. They haven't gotten many shots on goal. I checked that. I'm looking at the scoreboard. It's Sunday. <laughs> Daylight savings time. We talked about that. Not a fan. Yeah, that's right. Your whole day was yeah, My whole day was, was kind of kitty wampus because of that. At neutral ice, Harrison Roy, co-captain from Lakeville, Massachusetts. He'll cross the blue line and shoot. Hit the skates of Poolman and skittered wide. Flung in again by the Lakers. Controlled by Piku on the near side wall. 
Piku shuffles it below the goal line. Cheslock piled on top of Teleguin. A steal by Ryan O'Neill. And O'Neill will weave across the line, trying to slither past Lakers. And the Lakers will control for a moment, then stolen by the Tommies and sent in by Wallen from the far wall. Behind the net, O'Neill. O'Neill tried to center in front, blocked out of the zone by Blanchett. And honestly, the way the Tommies have played, I honestly thought that they've had the better of the chances here. That's why I guess it wasn't phasing me when I was talking about those opposite directions. I think the Tommies have controlled things for the most part, and the Lakers have had more shots, but I think the Tommies have had the better of the game plan so far. Gleason will chug down to the offensive corner. Westcott stole it momentarily. Malmquist got it back. Pries it to Pullman at the point. Pullman, nifty keep. There's Malmquist, left circle, sends it to the slot off of Wallen, who caught a stick up high and reacted as such, but no call. Wallen has a theft on the half wall. The Lakers have been a little sloppy in their own zone at times here, Nick, and they've given the Tommies extra chances. We'll see how that comes into play later in the game. That time they clear through neutral. Pullman back for Cheslock. Cheslock whistles it in off the window. With Sofo's goal last night, still two Tommies left who need that first career tally. Cheslock and Abrahamson in the defensive ranks. Of course, Cheslock didn't join the team until midway through, so playing fewer games than Abrahamson. But Abrahamson's done his part on the defensive side of things. He's held his own and played very well defensively for the Tommies. There's a pepper check and a puck that goes out of play off a Laker. This draw should come out to neutral. Just under a minute to play in the first, one nothing St. Thomas. You see that check right there, big check along the boards for the clear. And we didn't see that many big checks the first couple of games until late in the game yesterday. So we're definitely seeing a, a slightly more physical play from both of these teams than we've seen. A lot more free-flowing in games one and two. Dished in by Cole Miller. Luke Manning, great job rocketing off the corner boards. Tried to shoot and got tripped up. From behind the net, Pepper. Centers pass broke up. High slot, Gower kept it in the zone. Bushy along the wall. Brought it past the blue line. Gower pinching in. And it's taken by Harrington. He's got a man. Roy left wing. Oh. Love save, Trotter. Oh, the goaltender's finest effort of the night. Keeps it 1-0. My goodness, Aaron Trotter. Loving that out of the air. This was the first time probably since game one where a really good opportunity getting free on the play was Roy and Trotter being the cage warden in there locking it down on <laughs> cell block G. 25 to go in the first period. Tommy's clear the puck leading one nothing. Trotters faced 15 shots on goal now. Lakers have had a good push in the latter half of this period. The Tommies have had quality chances themselves as well. And Kungle back in his own corner with six on the clock. Did the Tommies have time for one look? Probably not. Cheslock dumps it in. And the Tommies content to take a 1-0 lead into the intermission. Luke Leyland, a power play goal. O'Neal and Gower the assists. And the Tommies lead 1-0 after 20 minutes in a do-or-die game three. Three, two, one, go. This is Scout Mason. Alongside of me is Sophie Camilli. Division One Sports. Ready replay, effect, rolling. Division One opportunity. The lob to Parker Bjorkley. My goodness. St. Thomas built. Student sustained. There's never been a better time to be a Tommy. Tap into your potential with Tommy Athletic Productions. At Supply Chain Solutions, our employees are our true value. In the heart of the ever-changing supply chain industry, we know it's our team that propels us forward. As a proud partner of Tommy Athletics, we're excited to welcome St. Thomas students into our family. At Supply Chain Solutions, we're more than colleagues. Working together and celebrating together is our recipe for excellence. Join our team and discover a rewarding journey together. Twin 
City's Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. The best health care is there in ways big and small. There when we most and least expect it. We may not see it, but we feel it. It lets us know we're not in this alone. Everyone deserves a healthcare partner who never quits. One who's there for what matters. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Cryptocurrency, espionage, cybersecurity? As a political science major at St. Thomas, I never dreamed I'd be entangled in so much intrigue. But thanks to my professor's mentoring, I got a Fulbright scholarship that took me to Tel Aviv and then Washington, D.C. Now I've set my sights on becoming U.S. ambassador to the U.N. I'm Valerie and I'm a Tommy. You own the groove. But have you ever thought who owns your money? At Wings Credit Union, you own it. Unlike banks where you're a customer, here, you're an owner. So profits help you and the community around you. That means things like high-yield checking accounts, savings accounts, and certificates. It's time to own your money. Mike Gallagher back with you. One period complete at St. Thomas Ice Arena. It's the Tommies of Lake Superior State in Game 3 of their Best of 3 series. The two teams split the first two games, and for one of them, there's no tomorrow after the clock winds down tonight. There is a tomorrow at the University of St. Thomas regardless of result tonight, and it is bright. The arena they're playing in this evening is now just a temporary solution to what's coming next. It will hold five times the amount of folks that the Tommy's current home does. Be on campus versus the off-campus solution they're currently in and transform a campus that is still largely Division III in their athletic facilities into one that can compete with the best in basketball and hockey at the Division I level. Our future is... Older. Brighter. Stronger. And more powerful than ever before. Meet St. Thomas's new home for hockey and basketball. Lee and Penny Anderson Arena. What an exciting time to be a Tommy. As an alum, somebody who's played and coached here for 27 years um, and, and seen a lot of successes across the board in athletics, um, and now this transition to Division I, I think this arena symbolizes in a lot of ways both St. Thomas's commitment to athletics but also our entrepreneurial spirit. When you look at how this university has evolved over the last 50 years um, in so many inspiring ways. Um, I think this arena is going to position us in basketball and hockey uh, to recruit student athletes who um, we may not have been able to otherwise. It's going to provide a meeting spot for our community both in basketball and hockey where really the entire state 
is going to have this facility that is as good as any in the region. Yeah, my answer would be yesterday. You know, that's how quickly uh, this this new announcement has has uh, made a, an impact on our program, and I think not only our women's hockey program, but certainly the hockey and basketball, and, and even you know the athletic department as a whole. Um, whether it's recruiting or the anticipation of student athletes or the alumni engagement, uh, to me, uh, it's an immediate impact and it's exciting and it just raises that uh, level of excellence that St. Thomas has, has always been known for. Tommy men's hockey coach Rico Blasi, not pictured in those interviews, but rest assured he's just as excited as Coach Johnson and Tower for what's to come at Lee and Penny Anderson Arena. Housing both basketballs and hockeys for the Tommies, it's going to be a bustling building at all hours of the day and night. That video hit the top line items pretty extensively, but here's some extra context because it is just going to be a lot more than what you see in that video. In addition to the main arena that you saw, two practice basketball facilities are planned. One for women's basketball, one for men's basketball, while an auxiliary sheet of ice is also in the specs for the new complex. Players and coaches lounges, weight room facilities, athletic training, suites, club rooms. I mean, this is going to be state of the art on a number of different levels, and whenever Tommy Men's Hockey wraps up their season, perhaps the best part of it all for Rico Blasi's program as well as those of Coach Johnson, Coach Tower, and women's basketball head coach Ruth Sin. The conclusion of winter sports marks just one more full season until Liam Penny Anderson Arena is scheduled to open its doors. Fall of 2025, not far off at all. Aggressive build timeline, but should they be able to pull it off? We're just 18 months from the $175 million mecca being open to the public, the Tommy teams, and the bright future they hope it builds. Intermission 1 wrapping up, back to hockey after this on Flow Sports. The best health care is there in ways big and small. There when we most and least expect it. We may not see it, but we feel it. It lets us know we're not in this alone. Everyone deserves a healthcare partner who never quits. One who's there for what matters. United Healthcare, there for what matters. You own the groove. But have you ever thought who owns your money? At Wings Credit Union, you own it. Unlike banks where you're a customer, here you're an owner. So profits help you and the community around you. That means things like high yield checking accounts, savings accounts, and certificates. It's time to own your money. Building a surgical robot isn't just an amazing feat of engineering. It's an art that combines engineering and computer science with a human touch. I began exploring robotics at St. Thomas, where my professors worked with me to combine my love of mechanical and electrical engineering. Today, I develop robotic systems that enhance surgical dexterity. I create small miracles every day. I'm Dr. Ann Mayavich Vai, and I'm a Tommy. We're growing. We're building. We're ready. Forehand ties the hockey game. He's out front to Fiancé and a shot and a goal. He's got Leyland left side, a screen, a score. Leyland. Tickets on sale now. Visit TommySports.com.
Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. There's an awesome power out there, and it's limitless. At the St. Thomas School of Engineering, we're using that power in one of the only student-driven microgrid research facilities in the nation. We work on real-world projects to shape the evolution of energy in the face of climate change. This power doesn't come from the sun. It comes from students like us. I'm Ian. I'm Mansu. I'm Carissa. And, and we're, we're Tommies. At Supply Chain Solutions, our employees are our true value. In the heart of the ever-changing supply chain industry, we know it's our team that propels us forward. As a proud partner of Tommy Athletics, we're excited to welcome St. Thomas students into our family. At Supply Chain Solutions, we're more than colleagues. Working together and celebrating together is our recipe for excellence. Join our team and discover a rewarding journey together. History. It's where we've been. It's what we've made. One hundred and twenty years of varsity athletics. Five hundred and seventeen team conference titles. Champions for 68 individual national champions. Nine different sports with team national titles. The celebration was on as St. Thomas wins the title. One proud past. One bright future. 21 varsity sports. 10 competitive venues, 4 different conferences, D3 to D1. The numbers have changed, the mission, the same. Let's make history together. Join the University of St. Thomas today. Mike Gallagher back with you. Middle period of three tonight coming your way in this final game of the best of three between the Tommies and Lakers. Here's Sam Ekstrom with a huge 20 minutes of hockey. Came away with a couple losses, 14-5 and 5-4. Meanwhile, the men's basketball team in action right now at halftime in Sioux Falls in the 4-5 game of the Summit League Tournament. They lead North Dakota State 42-22. to You can hear that right now on AM 1500 ESPN. Women's basketball team season ended in Sioux Falls earlier today against the South Dakota Coyotes, a 70-57 defeat. The softball, uh, softball team in St. Louis lost 9-1 yesterday against the Billikens. Uh, women's hockey team season ended last weekend in their WCHA first round meeting. That's your Tommy's weekend whip around. And a reminder on the CCHA bracket, the one seed, Bemidji State, swept Ferris State Friday, Saturday. Friday, they had to go to overtime. Michigan Tech with a five-goal win and a one-goal win to sweep Bowling Green. And Minnesota State Mankato with a five-goal win and a one-goal win to sweep Northern Michigan. So this is the last slot. The Tommies win. They will host Michigan Tech six days from now on Saturday. If Lake State wins, they'll head to Bemidji. Second period, set to go. Tommies in the home whites from left to right. Lake State in blue and gold from right to left. And we're underway. Teams at even strength to begin the second period. Luke Leyland a power play goal, the difference. Tommies up against the number one special teams group in the CCHA, and they are, they've had the advantage in special team situations in this series. That's huge. 
Harrington crosses the line far side for Lake State. Shovels the puck toward the points. Keeps it on his stick. He'll send one high off the glass. Rebound try. Bushy didn't get anything on it. Tommy's cleared out to center. Schweitzer. Gives away to the Tommies. Gleason fumbled it off his tape, and Schweitzer back with it. Opening minute, second period, 1-0 Tommies. And you talk about that special teams. That's something that here in the second two periods coming up, that's probably not something you want to overly test and continue to try out. It's very important for the Tommies to not take penalties and put Lake Superior State at an advantage even they're already at an advantage with the number of players out there so you don't want to give them even more opportunity there they are 0 for 6 on the power play in this series Tommies have two power play goals brought up by Dawson Tritt offensive zone for Lake State cross ice Schweitzer tried the tic-tac-toe back to the middle for Batchelder Batchelder ended up with it down the slot he got tripped up no call retrieved by Cheslock over for Poolman Bank over for Pepper. Pepper near the point. Zone held Batchelder. Batchelder got his stick tied up. He worked it to Piku. Shoveled toward the far corner. Poolman scooped it out of the zone. Grant Hindman is awaiting it. The junior defenseman. Stands behind the Lake State net. Two minutes gone in the second. one nothing Tommies. Heinemann shovels it forward. There's Teleguin motoring in past Peters. He's hit by Cole Miller with a hip check. And down he goes, slow to get up, is Teleguin. Meanwhile, Leyland up the right wing. The feed to O'Neill, slightly offside. Teleguin does stay on the ice. He didn't go back to the bench. So even though he was slow to get up, he seems to be fine. Didn't leave for a shift change. Well, Nick, you pointed out the physicality in that first period, but nothing unruly like we saw in the third period last night. So in that sense, there hasn't been a lot of carryover. Yeah, I mean, it's been physical, but not to the point of provocation, we'll say. And that was the concern I had late in the game last night, and that was the concern I had if we saw it, we were going to see it early in the game, and we didn't see it. Steel O'Neill, two-on-one with Prokop. Loose down the middle, Leyland couldn't get a stick to it. A good diving defensive play by Kungel. Prokop feeds Leyland in the slot. To Abrahamson at the point. Looped around the wall. Near side, Gower. Held it in with his body, and now Kungel the outlet. Tipped in by Venagoni, the new fourth liner added to the lineup. Outletted back by the Tommies down the left wing. Interception by Regan Milburn, the freshman. Poked in by Lewandowski. He'll hustle to the bench as Cheslock looks up ice. Stretch pass for Metz at the blue line. Metz chopping it over for Sofo. He fell down. Numbers for Lake State. Three on two. Backos to Roy. A shot. A block by Cheslock. Gathered in by Backos in the corner. Worked it to Roy. Roy will navigate to the far corner. Harrison Roy on his backhand to Blanchett high slot. Jack Blanchett. Whips a wrister high off the window. Roy holds the zone and wheels it to the right point. Rollison muscling against Metz. Now Cheslock picks it up for the Tommies and lifts it. Aerial out of the zone. It will be an icing. It was a slow rolling puck. It looked like it may not get there initially the way it was lofted out. It was a good idea to try and get the puck down the ice without icing it and get a change, but that was not what occurred, and so 16-19 to go. We'll have a face-off inside the Tommy zone. And again, we want to avoid having these type of scenarios where there's a long time where you can't get that shift change. D zone face-off win for the Tommies. They are 14-8 in the face-off circle in this game. Been a big advantage for them against the last place face-off team in the conference. When you get one player off with that, it only came out to center ice. That's what I'm talking about. You only get one player at a time. That makes for long shifts right now. No shots on goal yet in the period, though, for Lake State. Over four minutes in, Borshov half wall. Slipped it for Connor Milburn. Far side, Westcott. Rim of the far circle toward the net. Quick shot and a good reflex save by Aaron Trotter. Westcott buried. Metz in a penalty. And Metz is hurt on the near side. He stumbled getting to the bench. Yeah. J.D. Metz will be tended to. 
And he will need to be helped to the bench. He doesn't want the help, but he needs it as he's a little bit wobbly. And he's actually going to be turned away at center ice. And the training staff's going to turn him directly to the locker room. Jamie Jagger walks him off the ice. Tommies are already a forward down. That is Jared Westcott, the top point getter on the Lakers with a big hit on the near side against Metz, sending him presumably head first into the boards. Westcott is their leader in penalty minutes and he picks up maybe five. And we're gonna have a review on this oh, one. Yes. For player ejection. Oh my, I mean if Jared Westcott is ejected from the game, that is quite a loss, as is Metz, just from a sheer numbers standpoint. He's a scrappy third liner for the Tommies. Well, what's important here, well, let's use a different terminology. As we first uh, will take a look at this, is Metz will be on the left side of your screen, uh, right here as he goes in, and yeah, he goes hard into the boards, head first into the boards, and so already a major penalty is the call. Metz has been the player that's been rotating with the third and the fourth line. So Scrappy, yes, but he's been used in double duty here throughout the whole series. After review, the penalty is five minutes for boarding in a game misconduct to 15 Lake Superior. Jared Westcott has been ejected. The number two point man in the CCHA gets serenaded by the students off the ice and in game three the senior former transfer from Penn State is gone well and this is the specter of what's been bubbling since late in last night's game we had talked about it over and over about St. Thomas's short it seemed like it was getting chippier and chippier throughout that third period last night and it was maybe with the idea that, you know, something like this would happen. I don't think Lake Superior State wanted their own person to be ejected, but maybe something on a retaliatory fashion. But St. Thomas loses a player in the process, and we'll have to monitor that as well. They're on the power play for five, trying to take a two-goal lead. Leyland to Gower, left side O'Neal. Leyland goal line extended on the left side. Here's Gower, left point. Gower over for Leyland. Leyland, quick shot, flexed away. Langenanger centered for Gleason. Backhanded toward the point and out. And lost in all of this is the Tommies have a golden opportunity here with five-minute major here to put a few in without losing the power play here. And this is a great opportunity for the Tommies potentially to get a lead. Or a two-on-one the other way. This is Milburn shorthanded to Tritt. Backhand, Milburn scores shorthanded to tie the game. You talk about a momentum shifter. Give and go, Milburn and Tritt. I didn't see exactly how Milburn got the puck, but once he did, he saw an angle coming with Trent, and he took advantage of it. That's the speed we've been talking about all weekend, especially with Milburn and Trent. And Westcott as well, who obviously isn't in the game anymore, but that second line is a really speedy line, and if you make a mistake and lose the puck and they have an advantage, they're going to take it. New hockey game. Milburn's third of the weekend, 16th of the year, second most on the team. Tommies can get it back, though, with four minutes of power play time remaining. Goal comes at 5-10 of the period. Poolman feeds Malmquist near circle. Malmquist, it's tipped toward Manning in the corner. He's tied up by Hindman. Schweitzer cannot clear. Cheslock kept it. Reaching in Harrington. Schweitzer. Over to the near corner, Hindman will get it out of the zone, sending it the length of the ice. Massive turn of events on that shorthanded goal. Lake State with their fourth of the year. Tommies give up their fourth. This one went off the skate of 
Malmquist, and it has to come all the way back. Poolman hounded by Roy. Tommy's trying to get a four on three here at the line. A good play by Tritt. And the Lakers with some jump in their step right now. Inside of three to go on the power play. 13 and a half left in the second period. Gleason at the line. Matthew Gleason to Luke Leyland. Borshov in the corner. Keep by Gleason on the left point. He's got O'Neal running the left circle. Run at by Bushy, and Bushy backhands it out. 1-1 one, one tie, stretch pass Trotter. Pro caught back for Gower at his blue line. He'll twirl. There's a delayed penalty on Lake State. And the cold bench is saying, bring the puck up. Have somebody touch it. It's too many men on the ice against Lake Superior State. And so that's going to be a two-man advantage. So a full two minutes of five on three. And any opportunity that the Tommies have has been exasperated here with a five on three opportunity here for the next two minutes. And this is one of those turning points for Lake State if they kill this, for the Tommies if they can score, we'll circle this sequence at the end of the game. Somebody's got to go to the box yet for Lake State. There's nobody in the box right now. There's only three players on the ice. There we go. Going to be Blanchett going to the box for two. Wow, well, Blanchett now caught going in, going out. Witten is exasperated. It'll be Blanchett, the extra defenseman, serving it. A five on three for the full two minutes. And the faceoff is won by Lake State, but O'Neill trying to keep it and does. Gleason goes behind the net. Tommy's have the zone. Leyland for Gower, switches places. Now Leyland slaps one wide left. The rebound controlled by Kungle to the corner. He's met by O'Neill. Over to Gleason. Gleason looks out front. Gleason makes a move and a poke check away. Got it to the corner. Gower right point. Gower down low for Gleason. Gleason works the puck to O'Neill. Now Gleason. They've got two below the goal line. There's a slapper by Leyland. That was altered on the way by. Hit the glass. Gower left point. Gower Leyland loses the zone. Connor Milburn chipped it out. They talked about the special teams for Lake Superior State and they are really doing a job here in this first couple of minutes. Ryan O'Neill motors to the net. O'Neill tried to wrap it around. Look for Gleason. Slipped through him to the point for Leyland. Gower, Gleason on the near post. Shot saved and cleared out to the point, but not past the blue line. Gower kept it left circle. Here's O'Neill in tight. O'Neill, Leyland picked his spot, just missed. 44 seconds left on the five on three. Leyland on the boards. Gleason to the corner. O'Neill in the far side. O'Neill in the corner moves to the net. O'Neill circling. Feeding Gower left point. 30 seconds left on this important five on three. Leyland O'Neill looked for Gleason, couldn't connect. Gower right point. Gower, Gleason again, right dot. Matthew Gleason across the alley, intercepted and cleared by Bacos. 10 seconds left on the five on three. Golden opportunity for the Tommies. Nearly expired. Momquist blazes in. Left wing Wallen. Here's Cheslock. It's a five on four. It's Momquist in close. Backhand saved by Langenanger. Wallen to the point. Poolman. Cheslock fires. Glove save Langenanger with nine on the power play. And we're seeing right now the Lakers, one of the best penalty killers in the nation. And this is what we're seeing here right now, really sharp. And they've been sharp this entire five minute penalty, which includes the two minutes of five on three. And they're nine seconds away from being plus one on a five minute major against them. Connor Milburn's shorthanded goal. Tying this game in the second period. Puck comes to the corner. Five seconds until the major is over. And they're at full strength. Wallen got taken down by Bushy. Malmquist has the puck in the offensive far corner. Liam Malmquist passing for Cheslock at the left point, skating on the rim of the circle. Cheslock mishandled it at the point, brought out to Trick. And right back in comes Malmquist. 
met by Milburn, and he'll spin it back to center. Speaking of spinning, Manning pirouettes into the zone. A wall and shot, and a hold by Langenanger. 10-10, left in the second. Well, and Lake Superior State, of course, as you would expect, they look like they've got a jump in their step now, and it's been that case ever since they got that shorthand goal. They look very sharp the last several minutes. And what we saw last night for St. Thomas, particularly that one power play where they got 10 shot opportunities, they were crisp, the passes were right there. We haven't seen that quite yet. And on that particular power play, there were a couple of times where just missed some connections and just not quite as sharp as they were last night on the power play yet. We've reached the midway point of game three, all even at one, and the intensity has moved up a notch on the meter. Into the zone, Schweitzer, he centers. Miller interrupted it. Piowski hand pass to Sofo. Will they send us to break here? We'll wait for the official signal. 9.43 to go in the second. And they'll hold off here, I think, for an offensive zone faceoff for Lake State. Good call on the hand pass. Tommies have even the shots up a bit. Now 16-13, still favoring Lake State. Borshov off the end boards with an attempt. Blanchett at the point, falls at the feet of Venagoni. Blanchett, freshly out of the box, moves it to Lewandowski on the far wall. Lakers offensive zone. They have just two shots on goal in the second. One of them went in, though, from Milburn. Kept in by Venagoni. Wrapped it around the wall. Borshov to the point. Pass Lewandowski all the way down. This is an icing on the Tommies. One one tie. 9 12 to go in the second. Sam Ekstrom and Nick Walsh with you from Mendota Heights. We've got if we have a timeout here. St. Thomas has taken their timeout. So after a disappointing power play for the Tommies, Rico Blasi will try to right the ship. And make sure that this doesn't careen the wrong way for St. Thomas at the game's midway point and maybe a point of, of rest as well considering they've lost J.D. Metz. Let's keep that in mind. Now Mason Poolman, probably the defenseman they would play up if they had to. Let's watch Poolman. He's done that a little bit this year. Yeah, I was I was thinking the same thing as to how exactly they would go about this. There's maybe another reason you talk about rest. I think that's a valid question. I'm also thinking about how that five-minute major win, and you mentioned this as well, but a mentality thing you know you you have that five minute major you were leading one to nothing you really had that opportunity to potentially take some control in this and all of a sudden that major is over it's a tie game and again maybe just a little bit of a shell shock maybe just a, a recalibration if you will remember it's a one one game we're halfway home we get one more we're back in front so let's keep in the game mentally as well as physically Face-off win, Bushy shot, hit Gower, ramped out of play, sends us to a uh, media timeout. So the Tommies go two for one on the timeouts and we'll step aside, one one tie on the Tommy Sports Network from Learfield.
9.09 to go in the second period. 1-1 in a decisive game three in the CCHA quarterfinals. Tommy's trying to stay home and play Michigan Tech on Saturday with a win. Kungel right point. Bushy with a shot. Poked away by Aaron Trotter. Harrison Roy on the far wall. Ryan O'Neill, wing to wing. Hooks up with Leyland. Flicked it off of Kungel. Harrington in the zone, gloved down by Gower. Abrahamson up the ice. O'Neill waves it in to the far corner, goes after it. He'll get some reinforcements now in the form of Malmquist. John Harrington lets the puck go by. Milburn back for Harrington. There's Bacos pumping one in the near corner into the Tommy's end. Dug out by Mason Poolman. Up for Wallen. That's off of Gleason stick, recontrolled by Tritt. Tritt shoots one well wide to the left, goes and gets his miss. Hacked it off of Cheslock. Rolled on the boards to Poolman behind his net. Just over eight minutes to go in the second period. There's a zone keep at the point by Lake State. Looking for their first lead. Hindman from the point. Rollis and Arister redirected. And it jutted out the near side. Nobody there in blue to pound it home. Gleason crossed the line for the Tommies. He saucers one. Punched away by Langenanger. 7.40 to go in the second. And flying down the wing is Batchelder. He cuts to the middle. Batchelder on his forehand. Veers to the corner. Manning will take it away from him. Avoids the trip check. Cole Miller loops it for Lucas Wallen. He tries to clear. Up ahead to Manning near wing. The bank pass Piowski. Piowski and Sofo the fourth line, but they've lost J.D. Metz on the third line. We'll see how they shuffle lines going forward. On the far side, Piku poke check by Gower, and he'll loop one all the way down ice. On that last uh, rush, the Tommies had offensive players from three different lines out there at the same time. They had Wallen out there, Manning, and O'Neill, or uh, rather Piowski. So they had three different players from three different lines out there all at the same time. So I think it's going to be a, a moving part right now as they've got Piowski out there along with Manning and like Miller along the left wing as well. So they're doing whatever they can right now. A blast by Schweitzer there was denied and Pepper pries it in far corner. He'll give chase against Bushy. Luke Manning first there, good pass to Gower. Gower at the point, sent it wide of the net. Harrison Roy hauled it in in the corner for the Lakers. Nifty keep by Abrahamson from the point, down low. This is O'Neal. O'Neal the pro cop. They couldn't get a shot off. Both Tommies in tight. Not much real estate here against the Lakers as Roy gives it a try. Pops in the air. Look out. Harrington swatted it toward the glove of Trotter who scooped it. An odd bouncing puck and he had visions of something bad happening there. And Gower a little extracurricular after the whistle blows he took exception a little bit to something that John Harrington said or did prior to the whistle Trotter at 95 percent in the game he's 19 of 20 biggest goal tending game of his collegiate career Batch Elder on the draw wins it. Shot by Venegoni. That's blocked by Cheslock. Pro Cop endeavors to clear and he gets it out to center. Hindman backpedaling into his own zone. Carter Batch Elder, the freshman from Eden Prairie, turned it over. Here's O'Neill. O'Neill to the right. The pass to Pro Cop. Pro Cop missed it wide. Poolman gives it a try from the point. Blocked by Batch Elder. And Kungle sends it to the point. Momquist touched it. Could this be too many men? It Rico is. Blasi is saying no, no. But the official is the one saying yes right now, and he's calling it. They will confer. We're looking at it here. Leyland hopped off simultaneously with Malmquist hopping on and touching the puck. Now, if that was his guy, that could be a legal touch. The officials still talking about it. And, and the Tommies have used their timeout, which therefore they couldn't challenge that element of the play. Correct. Here's the reaction. 
you're watching us on the stream. And here we go with the answer. Too many players on the ice at St. Thomas. Yeah, the coaching staff is furious at the call standing here. Malmquist hopped off the bench and touched it immediately right as Leyland was getting off. And the Tommies will go to the kill and you need the wide angle to really count them up. Yeah. I mean, the way that the St. Thomas bench reacted, it seems like they know that that touch was legal. And we, again, don't have the the all uh, the all ten angle, if you will. Just a slight emendation to the original note is Malmquist has come out of the box. Leyland has gone into the box. So Leyland now the one serving it for St. Thomas. But this is a paramount penalty kill situation for St. Thomas now. One that they don't feel they should be involved in right now, but nonetheless they are. And a team that's 0 for 6 on the power play with an opportunity here after picking up the shorthanded goal. Another chance for a special teams goal a little more traditionally. Tommy's looking for a quick clearance. Abrahamson hammers it off the corner boards, but it stays in. Harrington passes it to Bacos. Up for Harrington. Harrington right point, Bacos far circle. On the ice with Rollison and Roy. They don't have Westcott. Here's Roy, left dot. Parked in front is Tritt. Here's Roy on the rotation. Back to Rollison. Rollison. Watched by Wallen. Here's Roy. A shot hit Abrahamson. Went to the corner. Harrington with 125 on the power play. Tommies have yet to clear it out. Harrington has it far boards. Moves down to the circle. Harrington shot it high off the window. Wallen on the shorthanded break. Wallen with Malmquist. Wallen's pass blocked down by Harrington. Kind of came back to him. He still had a chance, but it was well wide. Now Milburn moves to the slot. Puck kicked away by Poolman. Minute left in the penalty kill. It'll be brought ahead by Cheslock, who drags it for Gleason. Injured Laker behind the play. Two on one. Gleason and Cheslock. Gleason shot blocked and out of play off of Bushy. Harrington, the one hurt, and he ambles to the bench in pain. Boy, and we've got some frustration over on the far side on the Lake Superior bench by a couple of players. Harrington's down, but looked like maybe Harrison Roy. He, he pitched a water bottle in anger over there as Harrington came over the bench. So they've got things boiling over here, maybe on both sides right now. Gleason with a shorthanded shot on goal. Save Langenanger. 1-1 score. 40 seconds left on the power play. Lakers bring it back up. Batchelder. Flips it to the far corner. Poolman first to it. It's played by Schweitzer. Centers for Piku. It's poked away by Prokop. Now he comes out the other way shorthanded. Prokop with Gleason. Prokop shot blocked. It's loose in the blue paint and covered. There's a penalty and interference. And it looks like it's on the Lakers. Yeah, and what that was was Gleason and Piku were going at it, coming down the ice, and it was... Right there, you can see it on the left side, and that was what the call was. And so what that did was it impeded the ability of Gleason to get an open lane, and so the interference, the call, that even things out for the next 20, and then it'll be a St. Thomas power play for a minute 40 after that. 1-1 one, one score, 4.19 to go in the second. Lakers drop to 0 for 2 on the power play. Tommies are 1 for 3. They're about to have another. 20 seconds of open ice here in the 4 on 4. Clean win by Manning. Back for Cheslock. Offensive left point. He goes to Malmquist. Opens lane to the net. And a shot saved by Langeninger. 13 seconds to go on the 4 on 4. The Tommies have had a lot of open windows close quickly on them here in the second period where it looks like they have the slice of daylight they need and just haven't been able to get that magic shot or that magic pass to connect. Cheslock gives it a try off of Borshov out of play. Tommy's working their way toward that power play in nine seconds. 
Well, and going back to that five minutes, it just didn't seem like they were always 100% comfortable. It seemed like things were just a little bit off kilter, and part of that, when you get a player injured, it throws off your lines, and then, of course, when a team scores a shorthanded goal, that throws you off as well, so a bit of a one-two punch there. Chase Cheslock. As the power play begins for the Tommies for 100 seconds to Manning in the zone. Manning, right wing, Luke Manning, bottom of the circle. To Malmquist near boards. Up high, Poolman. Touch pass to Cheslock. Rim of the left circle, shot, score! First career goal, Chase Cheslock. Tommies up 2-1. Big response for St. Thomas, as you can see Cheslock getting the reception from Kuhlman there, walking in, and the snipe shot underneath Langenegger, and the Tommies on the special teams have reclaimed the lead. It was Sofo yesterday, Cheslock today, the 19-year-old Devils draft pick. Picks quite a time. Power play goal! His first collegiate goal! Scored by number 26, Chase Chesla! Assisted by number 10, Mason Pullman, and number 25, Liam Momquist. Down in the power play goal, 16 16. Gleason back in the zone for the Tommies who lead 2-1. Gleason rim of the circle. Looking back door for Wallen. Couldn't get his stick on the ice. Chase Cheslock with the go-ahead goal. A clearance here by Gleason. Cheslock had 92 points in high school, and he's been asserting himself more and more. Only been here for half a season. Joined the team after Christmas from the USHL. Broad in the zone by Regan Milburn. Down to the corner for Venagoni. Venagoni watched by Miller. Pepper has it. Pepper out of the zone up to Piowski. He crossed the blue line. Piowski toward the net. Wanted a tip from Manning who gathers it on the half wall. Piowski in the near corner crunched against the window by Schweitzer. Piowski Still hard on the puck here, 2.15 to go in the second period. Cheslock rides the line. Oh, there's a tip in front, and Langenanger got a piece. Quentin Pepper, far corner. Hassled by Batchelder. Luke Manning gets around Blanchett here in the corner. He feeds Cheslock. Tommy's moving the puck in the offensive zone. A Poolman drive just missed wide. Batchelder clears. Poolman to Cheslock. Both teams have scored here in the frame and icing on the Tommies. And it, it felt like it was teetering there, Nick, after the shorthanded goal, the missed major power play. It felt like it could go the wrong way, but the Tommies have gotten back to where they were to start the period. I think that goal does a lot of bit, a lot of good for the mentality of the team out there. You talk about the major, you give up the shorthanded goal, you don't score on the major penalty, you lose a player out there, and then it seemed like they were a little bit on their heels. Coach calls a timeout, and then you get the too many men on the ice. I mean, all those things just kind of back to back. And then they get the interference penalty. Lake State makes the mistake and gives St. Thomas an ability to get back into it, and the Tommies took advantage of it. Harrington is back on the ice after being injured earlier in the period, and a puck flies into the Lakers bench with 90 seconds left in the frame. 2-1 Tommies. This will be a neutral zone faceoff. They say that puck came off a Laker stick. So 90 seconds to go here, and now the Tommy's modus operandi here has to be make sure again, just like we talked about in the first period, go into the locker room with a lead here to end the second period. Don't make any mistakes here late. That's going to allow Lake Superior State to get back into this to a tie game. Harrington. Popped it up to Malmquist. Wallen worked it past the point and out. No five-on-five five goals in this game. 
Two on the power play for the Tommies and a shorthanded goal for the Lakers. The number one power play team and penalty kill team in the conference in the Lakers. Backos to Trent, offensive zone, return feed, Backos on his backhand, looked to the point, sent it off of Gleason. Tommies want a clearance here, 50 seconds left in the period. Connor Milburn, Abrahamson in a board battle with him, Wallen reaches in. Connor Milburn in a wrestling match, cleared out, touched the netting. And with 38 seconds to go in the period, a 2-1 Tommy's lead, and the faceoff should be coming to neutral here. More importantly, that puck leaving allows the Tommies to get a full-scale change out here with 38.7 seconds left. As, the, as that continue to be pinned against the board, the longer that goes, the more chance Lake Superior State could have controlled that, and that would have become a long shift for the Tommies. Piowski out there with Pepper and Manning. Face off taken by the Lakers, but all the way down in their zone. Half a minute to play in the second. And again, three different players from three different lines. So the line charts aren't going to do much good the rest of the way for St. Thomas. At center, clubbed in by the Lakers and then notched out by Cheslock. It'll wobble down, 16 seconds left in the period. Hindman. Up to center, off of Milburn's stick. Lewandowski tried to gather it. Pepper took it away from him with seven. Hindman back behind his cage with five, with three. It's Kungal with two, and the period will come to an end, and the Tommies are one period from advancing. And a really good job just at the end by Pepper to pressure that puck backwards. Don't allow Lake Superior State one last chance to push that puck forward. Pepper did a really nice job of pushing everybody back and making sure they had to pull it back. Buckle up, one period to go in game three of the CCHA quarters. Tommy. Supply Chain Solutions, our employees are our true value. In the heart of the ever-changing supply chain industry, we know it's our team that propels us forward. As a proud partner of Tommy Athletics, we're excited to welcome St. Thomas students into our family. At Supply Chain Solutions, we're more than colleagues. Working together and celebrating together is our recipe for excellence. Join our team and discover a rewarding journey together. I believe one really can change the world by helping business be more transparent, inclusive, sustainable, and globally minded. It's why I became a GHR Fellow, a unique full tuition scholarship at St. Thomas with an immersive four-year undergrad experience designed to develop principled business leaders for the common good. I'm Himani. We're GHR Fellows and we're, we're Tommies. Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. The best health care is there in ways big and small. There when we most and least expect it. We may not see it, but we feel it. It lets us know we're not in this alone. Everyone deserves a healthcare partner who never quits. One who's there for what matters. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Cryptocurrency, espionage, cybersecurity? As a political science major at St. Thomas, I never dreamed I'd be entangled in so much intrigue. But thanks to my professor's mentoring, I got a Fulbright scholarship that took me to Tel Aviv and then Washington, D.C. Now I've set my sights on becoming U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. 
I'm Valerie, and I'm a Tommy. You own the groove. But have you ever thought, who owns your money? At Wings Credit Union, you own it. Unlike banks where you're a customer, here you're an owner. So profits help you and the community around you. That means things like high-yield checking accounts, savings accounts, and certificates. It's time to own your money. This is Scout Mason. Alongside of me is Sophie Camilli. Division One Sports. Ready replay, effect, rolling. Division One opportunity. The lob to Parker Bjorkley. My goodness. St. Thomas built. Student sustained. There's never been a better time to be a Tommy. Tap into your potential with Tommy Athletic Productions. Mike Gallagher with you. Final intermission of this series between St. Thomas and Lake Superior State and a heck of a season it's been for both teams. For one, the season over after these next 20 game minutes. For the other, it's on to the CCHA semifinals next Saturday, leaving themselves just one win short of playing for a conference postseason championship. And for Lake State, a victory there would mean an automatic berth in the NCAA tournament. For St. Thomas, they don't have the good fortune to have access to NCAA postseasons as of yet, so their season would still be over, but it would be absolutely memorable and historic in its happening. Plus, another great data point for those that find no real rationale behind the arcane NCAA bylaw that forces a transitioning team to put in five years before they're able to compete in NCAA championships. Like it or not, though, it is the reality for the Tommies. And the reality St. Thomas is living is one that's quickly changing. Not only the climb from Division Three to Division One, the only school to ever make that ascension directly and not stopping at Division Two, As you can imagine, a ton comes with that, and there's incredible hills to climb and obstacles to navigate. But they're also navigating a changing reality on the academic side. As higher education becomes more and more competitive on a daily basis, school imitating sport or perhaps the opposite. Well, we showed you the facility upgrade incoming for the athletic side of the Tommies in Intermission 1. Here in Intermission 2, we show you the academic side, which has already made its big leap. Super exciting to see students here. We've been watching this go up for the past year and it's been a lot of construction and a lot of workers. But to see students finally in the classrooms and in the laboratories is just spectacular. This is manufacturing processes and statistical control. Geology 220, oceanography. The technique's importance is learning how to convey the story. Uh, let's see, we got guitar and ukulele. I think it's really cool to see all the different areas that art and science and engineering can come together and I think it's a really inspiring space. I think the artwork looks super cool and definitely stands out in the building. It's really cool to see a clean new space, see the new technology that they're using here. By having the science and engineering and mathematics all mixed in with the arts really broadens the education of our students. If you just look at the faces of the, of the students in this classroom right now, see how much they're just enjoying being in a space that's designed for this kind of experimentation, this kind of work. This is insane. The uniqueness of this will be a real draw to the University of St. Thomas, and I think students who come here will really be impressed and really understand what we're trying to do with a liberal arts education by living and breathing in this space.
That's the new Schenecker Center, home for science, technology, engineering, the arts, and math. The STEAM complex, about a month old now, up and running for the spring semester at the University of St. Thomas. The big academic advancement on the facility side in St. Paul for the Tommies. And it will be directly across from the soon-to-be-built Liam Penny Anderson Arena that will house hockeys, basketballs, commencements, concerts, and so much more for UST. The south side of campus for St. Thomas, really going to be something to behold. North Campus getting lots of upgrades, too, but go a block or two south, and that will hold the two state-of-the-art constructions, a new era, new look, and what you may call the new center of campus. With those two beauties sitting one next to the other, there will certainly be a lot of attention and activity in that few hundred-yard area the buildings will occupy. There you have it, St. Thomas looking like they're on the up and up on the facilities front. Will they feel the same way after this third period of play on the ice? The decisive 20 minutes of puck from St. Thomas Ice Arena when we're back on Flow Sports. A force was created more than 100 years ago. When Archbishop John Ireland stepped in and started a university for immigrants. Entrance exams and letters of rec were not required, but an open mind and open heart were mandatory. No matter their race, religion, or social status, we opened our doors to everyone, seeking to liberate their minds and change their destinies. And today we are a powerful force to be reckoned with. We are more than 110,000 Tommies strong. Our strength comes from being united by our convictions. The pursuit of truth is our guiding light. We are not looking for easy answers, but we are asking tough questions. We need leaders who think critically, act wisely, and work skillfully, all for the common good. The force that was created more than 100 years ago has gained strength and speed, and it's showing no sign of slowing down anytime soon. You own the groove. But have you ever thought, who owns your money? At Wings Credit Union, you own it. Unlike banks where you're a customer, here you're an owner. So profits help you and the community around you. That means things like high yield checking accounts, savings accounts, and certificates. It's time to own your money. Building a surgical robot isn't just an amazing feat of engineering. It's an art that combines engineering and computer science with a human touch. I began exploring robotics at St. Thomas, where my professors worked with me to combine my love of mechanical and electrical engineering. Today, I develop robotic systems that enhance surgical dexterity. I create small miracles every day. I'm Dr. Ann Mayavich Vai, and I'm a Tommy. We're growing. We're building. We're ready. Forehand ties the hockey game. Is out front to Fiamski and a shot and a goal. He's got Leyland left side, a screen, a score. Leyland. Tickets on sale now. Visit TommySports.com. Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. There's an awesome power out there, and it's limitless. At the St. Thomas School of Engineering, we're using that power in one of the only student-driven microgrid research facilities in the nation. We work on real-world projects to shape the evolution of energy in the face of climate change. This power doesn't come from the sun. It comes from students like us. I'm Ian. I'm Mansu. I'm Harissa. And, and we're, we're Tommies. Tommies. 
The best health care is there in ways big and small. There when we most and least expect it. We may not see it, but we feel it. It lets us know we're not in this alone. Everyone deserves a health care partner who never quits. One who's there for what matters. United Healthcare, there for what matters. At Supply Chain Solutions, our employees are our true value. In the heart of the ever-changing supply chain industry, we know it's our team that propels us forward. As a proud partner of Tommy Athletics, we're excited to welcome St. Thomas students into our family. At Supply Chain Solutions, we're more than colleagues. Working together and celebrating together is our recipe for excellence. Join our team and discover a rewarding journey together. The CCHA playoffs where the Mason Cup is on the line. Hello folks, Mike Gallagher with you and my time in your living rooms, cars, wherever. You've got your devices is up. St. Thomas and Lake Superior State have played eight periods and the winner of this best of three series all comes down to this. Sam Ekstrom brings us the dramatic finish to Tommy's Lakers here on Flow Sports. Thanks for listening to the Wings Credit Union Intermission Report. We're a minute away from the third period here in game three of the CCHA quarters, the only game going on in the conference tonight. Michigan Tech will come to Mendota Heights if the Tommies win for the semifinal next Saturday night. If the Lakers come back and win, they will head to Bemidji in the semis. Mankato has also advanced and they're awaiting their assignment for round two. Let's look at the NCAA scoreboard as well. Not a lot happening with some conferences not in their playoffs yet and those that are having sweeps, but a big one in the Big Ten. Ohio State upends Wisconsin. Two to one series win, sends the Badgers packing and maybe endangers their one seed hopes in the NCAA tournament. We are ready for the third period. Tommy's in the home whites from right to left against Ethan Langenanger, leading two to one. Lake State looking for its first playoff series win since 2021. Rico Blasi, Tommy's head coach, two and three all time in his 22 previous coaching seasons in game threes. Those all with Miami of Ohio. Harrington motors into the offensive zone for Lake State, opening seconds of the third. Harrison Roy down in the corner. Borshaw for Bacos. Malmquist out of the zone, trying to hustle past Rollison, but Rollison wins the race. He steers behind the net. Wallen goes after him. Harrington has it on the near wing. Wallen peels away. Harrington back for Rollison and up for Borshaw, the co-captain. Love down by Cheslock who shoots from beyond the blue line. Heat check from Cheslock. <laughs> it's gloved by Langenanger as Cheslock scored the go-ahead goal in the second period, his first as a Tommy. I was going to say, the last one worked out pretty well, so <laughs> why not try it again? Let's see, he just barely crossed center ice. And he generated the offensive zone draw. Hey, you, you don't score on 100% of the shots you don't take, so take it. Cleared out by the Lakers. They gain the line in the offensive zone. Lewandowski leads Bushy. He shoots, slowly rolling toward the net. Cheslock trying to chop it clear. Loose on the near side wall. Lewandowski and Piowski there. Poke checked away by Trotter as it trickled toward the net. And Poolman will skate out with it for the Tommies. Mason Poolman crossed the red line, pumped it in. Over a minute gone in the third. 2-1 Tommies lead trying to win two consecutive elimination games to advance. Miller behind the net, tied up against Tritt, up to O'Neal. He'll angle it down ice. Definitely no icing here. Hindman sent it off an official, centered in front. Prokop drop, O'Neal hit the post. Beautiful passing, and O'Neal rings the pipe. Early in the third. Yeah, the passing, they found O'Neal right in the right spot at the right time. And he rang the dinner bell. 
brutal. Tommy still lead two to one, 18-10 to go, icing on the Lakers. Another look for us here on Flow Hockey. Right off that far post, this will be a better view of it as Langenheer shifts right here. Oh, that hit the crossbar. That didn't hit the post, that hit the crossbar. Cleared out of the zone by the Lakers. Gleason at the blue line. Lakers back with it. Cam Kungel, two minutes gone in the third. Tommy's by one. Tommy's haven't trailed since Friday. Fired in by Malmquist. Langenanger plays the puck down. No goals, five on five in this game. Kungel down ice, and we have a whistle. What do we have? We've got a Laker penalty box opening. Too many players on the ice like safe. Oh my. Regan Milburn off. And the Tommies to the power play. That came from the official in the near corner to our left. And I did not see the call from there. It took a while, but both teams picking up too many men penalties here tonight. Both teams missing forwards. Maybe that's the explainer. Regan Milburn inserted in the lineup on the fourth line tonight. Brother of Connor Milburn. And the Tommies win the draw. They're two of four in the power play. Looking for a two goal lead. Ethan Gower over for O'Neill. Ethan Gower left point. O'Neill left circle. Has an assist in this one, his 19th. Prokop in the corner. Gleason tries to help him out, as does O'Neill. Board struggle. 25 seconds gone in the power play. Jarred loose to Leyland. In the far corner, Leyland has a goal in the game. And cleared out from the corner by Lake State. 17 minutes left. Gower settles behind the net. Emerges in front of Trotter. Distribution to Malmquist on the near wing. Goes far corner with the entry to Cheslock. Trying to dig it away from Kungel. Poked away from Cheslock, out to Schweitzer. Short-handed with Tritt. They'll give it a try. Intercepted by Malmquist, right into Manning. Luke Manning's had a big game. Made his presence felt. He'll bank it up to the point for Cheslock. Cheslock to Poolman. Poolman back to Malmquist, right point. He moves to the rim of the circle. The handoff to Wallen. Poolman, high slot. A blast by Cheslock. Kick save, Langenanger. 37 seconds left on the power play. Wallen tussles with Tritt. Sent rink wide to Malmquist. Bottom of the circle. He centers. It's loose in the slot. Kungel gathers and clears. Oh, a break for the Tommies. It hit an official. And they'll be able to get it back in quickly, though Cheslock is going to retreat. So not quite the advantage they thought they had. Malmquist in. Malmquist at the point. Stays with the puck. Goes toward the net. Man on the back door. Shot by Prokop wide. Peters holds the zone. Prokop again in the slot. Here's the feed to Miller. He'll shoot. Ramps out of play. And the power play comes to an end. The Lakers kill it with 15.41 to go. And we saw even on the power play that St. Thomas, due to the injury to Metz, they can't even be consistent on a full line within their power play as we saw Manning up on the uh, top line with Malmquist and Wallen and then later on the second line was also a little bit off kilter throughout there as well. So but Tommy's right now going with O'Neill, Prokop and Leyland. So most of the second line but Leyland is playing up right now on, from the third. They win the draw offensive zone. Borshaw behind his net wheels it out of Laker territory all the way down from Miller. Cole Miller will retrieve it for St. Thomas. Leading two to one in game three. Low scoring affair. It's been tight, dramatic. You'd expect nothing less. And icing on the Tommies, 15-23 remaining. Looks like this same line will stay out there. Pro Cop, Leyland and O'Neill with Peters and Miller, the defensive line here on this defensive zone faceoff. And the faceoff is controlled by the Lakers. Borshov muscling down to the end boards with it. 
But he's out dueled by Leyland who ripped the puck away and O'Neal will cruise in and shoot into the glove of Langenanger. Another offensive zone draw earned by a long Tommy's shot on goal. And O'Neal is kind of done at this point. He is taking nothing. He just kind of took Batchelder and threw him to the ice there and then had some words afterwards too. So as we watch O'Neal coming in, he fires on and we watch right at the end. He kind of gets tangled up there and Batchelder ends up on the ice. We entered the third period of Friday's game in a 2-1 score. The Lakers led that time and they ended up winning 4-1 with an empty netter. Lakers have the puck off the D zone, draw a win. Abrahamson down to play it. It was played with a high stick by the Lakers, so they have to get away. There's Manning. Manning fired it into the zone. Bobbling puck brought back out by Lake State. Here's Harrington with the zone entry. Shot from the point too high. Off the corner window. Rollis in the keep. It's kicked around in the slot. Now to the near side, Harrington. Rim of the right circle. Shot off the skates of Poolman. Loose behind the cage. Piku veers in to play it. The bank pass to Ross Rollison. Evan Bushy Rister. Trotter a save. 14-27 left. Now we'll see the first line reunited here. Gleason, Malmquist, and Wallen back out onto the ice here. Lake State, by the way, has done a much better job on the faceoffs in the second and third period. They pretty much even things up after the Tommies controlled it in the first period and they've been winning their share of faceoffs, although the Tommies get the best of this one. Nearly cleared by Malmquist, but a hold by Tritt. There's a puck flopping to the near corner. Gleason skates away from Kungal. Underneath his goal line, 14-10 to go in regulation. Abrahamson to Gower, the senior and former Bemidji State defenseman. Milburn steals, tripped to the end wall. Kungal on the near side. It's Kungal feeding the point. Grant Heinemann, a wrister off the end boards, looking for a bounce. It goes to Tritt in the near corner. A theft by Malmquist as Abrahamson piles on Tritt. Malmquist, the former Badger, looks up ice. Here's Gleason on the redirect. Now Gleason to the corner. Hindman got there first for the Lakers with 13.35 to go. 2-1, Tommy's lead. Harrison Roy up to the blue line, dislodged over to Bacos. He whipped it in. Peters plays it. Roy beat him to it, though. Roy centers. Shot, Harrington. Missed wide left. Leyland tied up, and O'Neal trying to get a breakaway with Prokop. With Leyland trailing, it's O'Neal right wing. O'Neal looked for the drop pass to Leyland. It was blocked away. Leyland got it back in the slot. The shot wide left. Poolman on the half wall. Behind the cage near Prokop. Prokop hovering there with O'Neal. Schweitzer takes it up for Harrington on the near wing. Bacos across center for the Lakers. They'll change behind him. Cheslock with the steal. And Poolman now with it, his defensive partner. O'Neal took a hit in the back. Pielski ended up with the puck. Tommy's in their own end. 12.40 left in a 2-1 lead. Shots even at 21 in this decisive game three. Tommy's first game three is a D1 program. Manning. Flipped over to Cheslock. Cheslock for Pepper at the blue line. Hand off to Piowski. Rim of the far circle. Got it behind for Quinton Pepper. Skating to it is penalty. Batchelder and a penalty on the Tommies. Pepper on Batchelder. Tripped him with 12-10 to go. Lakers power play. That's what you see here on the Replay. St. Thomas penalty number 15, minor penalty tripping. And you see on the replay, Pepper did get his stick underneath the skate, and so Pepper will go to the box for two minutes and a critical two minutes as there's a timeout coming up. So one last chance after this, if the Tommies could get through this penalty without giving up a goal, they would get a break here coming up built in on the media timeout, but they've got to find it in themselves to 
get one more stop here on the power play. Would Damon Witten consider doing his pulled goaltender maneuver? Remember yesterday, now they were down by three, desperation mode yesterday, they pulled the goalie on the power play to go six on four. Would they do it here with 12 to go in the game? No indication yet. Abrahamson clears the puck, and he's got Mobquist streaking down ice. Liam Mobquist denied by Langenanger. Short-handed chances in abundance for the Tommies in this game. Unable to convert on the break there. And so far, Witten a good decision not to pull the goaltender <laughs> here right now. Batchelder near corner. Minute 15 left power play. Bushy on the point. He'll feed Kungol on the left point. Kungol to the dot. His shot eaten up by Trotter. He falls on it, draws the whistle. 11-18 to go in 108 on the power play. And a little extra conversation between Cheslock and Schweitzer there. And to answer your question, I think even in the, the wildest of scenarios, 12-10 to go probably too early anyways to do anything crazy like that. However, sounds like the Minnesota Wild pulled their goaltender in overtime. So <laughs> anything can happen on a Sunday evening on the hockey rink, I guess. Is it a full moon out there tonight? Uh, might be. It is daylight savings. That's what the moon never comes out, is what you're saying. <laughs> Blanchett, rim of the near circle. Jack Blanchett to Bushy on the point. Blanchett on the wing. He'll shoot wide of the net. Cheslock hacks it toward the point. Bushy kept it. 50 seconds left power play. Slapper Blanchett saved Trotter. Saw it the whole way. 47 seconds to go on the power play. Yeah, nice job by Trotter, staying balanced. He did get a piece of that first blast as it went over him. He tipped it with the glove, and then on second effort, the rotation coming right back for the slap shot there, and this one right into the bread basket. Offensive zone draw, Milburn clean win. Schweitzer, the tap to Blanchett, near side wall. Skates by Malmquist. Blanchett with 40 left on the power play to the point, Bushy. Blanchett on the wall, looks in front, tipped away by Gower to the end boards. Trying to tie up Milburn. Blanchett with a good pinch on the half wall. Blanchett skips over to Bushy, kept the zone. Blanchett rim of the circle, 22 left on the power play. Bushy, Blanchett, right dot shot, a block by Abrahamson, and he will clear. 12 seconds left on the five on four. Pepper will pounce out of the box. In seven, in six, they gain the line. Dislodged from Bushy, he gets it back. Right circle, here's Kungel, skating to the corner. Pepper out of the box, he'll join the fray. Bushy near the half wall, poked away from him. Now Peters and Miller grappling in the corner against Lewandowski. Board battle on the near side, under 10 to go. Lakers keep the zone, Kungel. Looks to the left, shot by Heinemann, save Trotter, rebound out front, now goes to the corner. Piowski and Pepper tying up the puck handler. Venagoni there. Heinemann brought it to the point. Regan Milburn, slot shot, scores to tie the game. Regan Milburn makes it 2-2. And a move in the roster on this one as Milburn wasn't even on the depth chart the last two games, but the freshman, just his second goal of the season, as you watch here, as he comes out in front and just over the top right shoulder of Trotter to tie things up. Didn't look like there was a lot of traffic out front, and no, it was just got past Trotter, and we are tied with 9.37 to play. The Tommies survived the power play, but not the Aftermath, and so we are all squared up at two. Deuces wild with nine minutes to go. The Milburn brothers contribute both Laker goals. With 9.31 to go, we pause. Tie game.
Nine and a half minutes to go in game three. Tommies and Lakers tied at two. Mason Poolman left angle, sent it to the slot for the Tommies. Prokop picked it up. Cross ice. A shot kick saved by Langenanger on O'Neal's rip. Cheslock unable to keep the zone, delayed offside on the Tommies. What a great save by Langenager. A skate save, sliding his right foot over to make the save. Harrison Roy to the corner. Harrington took the centering pass, had his stick lifted by Malmquist. Nine minutes to go. Harrington in the near corner, centered, intercepted by Gleason. Lakers have come back from two one-goal deficits. Harrington enters the zone, one against four, sticking with the puck. Harrington finally enveloped. Malmquist can't clear. Blanchett a shot. Punched away by Trotter. Blanchett gloves it down to himself in the corner. Hands it off to Lewandowski. Looped it around the wall. Charging after. Evan Bushy there for the Lakers. He's on the puck from the dot. Shot blocked by Malmquist. Out of play. 8.24 to go. And again, we're seeing a little bit extra just in that last 30 or 40 seconds. To me, at least, it looks like a little more of a jump in the step of the Lakers there. You saw what Harrington was able to do one on four. Still able to fight through it and keep control of the puck. So the Tommies are going to have to survive a little bit here in this next series right now and take back the momentum. Tommies are down. J.D. Metz due to injury. And the Lakers are down Jared Westcott, who injured him. On an illegal hit, there's a rebound, and Regan Milburn swung and missed down the slot, trying to score the go-ahead goal after getting the tying tally. His first goal since November 14th and second of the season. Eight minutes left. Oh, pump fake there by Gower. Jetting down ice, Luke Manning. Around the wall, Piowski could not play it. Here come the Lakers, four on two perhaps at the line. Batchelder, shot altered by Peters. Miller touched it on to the wall. Batchelder lost a stick and that allows Piowski to clear it. Both teams taking the advantage, full scale changes. The only player that stays on the ice for either team is Nate Schweitzer who goes back to run the rush. Seven and a half to go in a tied game three. Poolman. Down low to play it in the Tommy zone. Poolman doubled up there in the corner boards. Trying to run the wall with it. Cheslock assisting him. Kept in at the point by Kungol. Puck chopped down in the slot. Poolman brings it to center. Sent back in by Schweitzer. Settled down by Trotter. Nearly taken by Lewandowski. But Malmquist swoops in to save the day. Here comes Malmquist at the red line. Flings it in deep. Ross Rollison first there. Tommy's changing with 6.50 to go. Abrahamson the keep. Around to O'Neal. Far wall for the Tommies. Back to the point. Slapper off the right fist of Langenanger. Abrahamson gives it a try. Blocked in front, but a steal by Leyland on the forecheck. Leyland looks out front. He's behind the net. Eaten up by Ross Rollison. Leyland rides the corner boards around a loose stick. Leyland. Now down low, O'Neal gives it a charge against Harrington. Poked along the near side wall. Prokop moves to the slot. Noah Prokop. Shot just wide. O'Neal gathering it in the left corner. O'Neal goes after it. Good shift for the Tommies. O'Neal left point shot tipped by Leyland toward the net. That hit a body. Noah Prokop flinging it off of Harrington and he'll finally clear the zone. Teleguin gets it in with six minutes to go in regulation. Tie game at two. Lakers haven't won a game three in 17 years. Seven straight losses in those situations. Trying to come back from a goal down, entering the third, which they haven't done all season. There's Manning, looping it in front, loose in the slot, a scramble, Piowski there, and the whistle blows. Tommy's doing exactly what you need to do in those situations, though, crashing the net. Loose puck until the whistle blows. Keep jarring away at it. The initial shot there. The second shot, the rebound, was probably the best opportunity. And then Langenager was able to hold on. Watch this initial shot comes through. He sticks it away. There's the second shot. Langenager able to make the save and then cover up as well. 
Shots even now at 27 apiece. Faceoffs now favoring the Lakers 29-26. They've stabilized a lot in the last period and change. Piowski back for Poolman, left point. Offensive zone are the Tommies looking for the go-ahead goal. Manning in the corner, evades Connor Milburn. Wrap around, Manning two tries. Connor Milburn sweeps it to the end wall. Borshaw, near side wing, banked up to Tritt, has Lewandowski in stride. He centers through the slot, nobody there. Quinton Pepper, the white jersey on the puck. Piowski dragged it up for Manning. Off of his stick, Tommies will change. Lakers repossess with five to play. Borshav in, off the corner window. Harrington the other side, can't control. Wallen leads Malmquist up ice. Stick handled too hard off of his tape. Exchanges hands and now Cheslock. On his own wing, near side. There's Gleason. Over to Malmquist, far side of the ice. Deflected in by Lucas Wallen. 4.35 to go regulation. Abrahamson holds from the left point. He lofts it in. Past the outstretched stick of Bushy. Bushy runs to it. Clears it out to center. That's chopped in the air. Falls to the feet of Bacos. He motors in right wing. Poke check by Abrahamson. Got it to the corner. Ethan Gower from the end boards. Malmquist lifting it through center. This will trickle down for Atami's icing. 4.09 to go in the third. 2-2. And just as a reminder, the Tommies took their timeout earlier in the second period, right around the halfway mark of the game. And so as we get closer and closer to the end of this third period, it'll be Lake Superior State if they choose to take a timeout on their time, but the Tommies won't have that opportunity here late. Offensive zone draw for the Lakers. Third period, third game. Series tied, game tied. Faceoff fought four and one and then sent into the rafters by Gower and they'll do it again with 4.05 left. That's probably one feature that uh, the Tommies will not miss <laughs> in two years or so when they uh, move into the new rink is the low ceiling and the padding that uh, kind of hangs from it as well the dampers 2-2 Two -two tie draw one by the Lakers Hindman shot into a crowd Prokop from his own corner to Miller on the near side with his own exit for the Tommies O'Neal angles it in far corner Connor Milburn is there he and his brother Regan have the two goals for the Lakers in the game Venagoni at center, backhands one wide of Trotter. He'll hand it off to Miller with 3.40 left in regulation. Crunch time in Mendota Heights. Connor Milburn into the zone. Tritt back for Milburn, offside. 3.31 left. Overtime is not the same in the playoffs. There would be an intermission and then a sudden death full period of play. One overtime game in the CCHA playoffs. Game one, Bemidji State and Ferris State won by Bemidji State early in that OT. Here's Tritt going behind the net for the Lakers. Stolen by Chase Cheslock. Off the window, down the ice. This should not be an icing as Blanchett catches up to it. Off the short window. And now down this on Trotter. Be, that oh. hit the post. So no icing. Trotter's done that a couple times in the series where you kind of catch your breath. And I think he had that post pretty well protected. Tipped in by Pepper offensively for the Tommies. Under three minutes to play. 2-2. Two -two. Bushy with the puck for the Lakers. Up to Harrington. Harrington right wing. Pumps the brakes. Quick shot. Roy. Rebound. Gathered in by Trotter after a brief bobble. And as we get closer to the end of regulation here, every one of those shots is paramount that there is no rebound. And Trotter... This jumped up on him just a little bit off the initial shot. And after that, he was able to cover up as there were Lakers on the doorstep. But good job by Trotter to not allow anything past the initial shot. 2.47 to go. Clean face-off win for Wallen. That's awfully important as Gleason comes out the right wing for the Tommies. Gleason looking cross-ice. 
Missed Wallen with the pass, and it results in an icing. 2.36 to go. Tough draw there for the Tommies. Gleason just about five or six feet on the wrong side of that center ice line, and so icing and a defensive zone faceoff here coming for the Tommies. And we've reached the point now of this do or die game where if you're invested, you're exhausted. Yeah. I mean, there's so much at stake here for these two programs. Quick shot off the draw, kick, save, Trotter, left pad, huge. Tommy's control, Gleason, the Malmquist, tipped into the zone. Ross Rollison picked up the puck in front of his goaltender and feeds Regan Milburn at the red line, handed it off to Batchelder. Here's Regan Milburn at the blue line, fired it in. Well, we've talked so much about the Tommies being shorthanded and all that, but at the same time, now you've got two teams that have played three games in a row. You're playing on emotion and adrenaline at this point. Tommy's offensive zone, Prokop. Prokop in the corner. He'll grapple against Rollison. Can't take any penalties here. Prokop ripped the puck away. Now he's hassled by Connor Milburn. Noah Prokop strong on the puck. He feeds the point. Cheslock Poolman, one touch pass. O'Neill to the far boards. He spins it in the glove of Langenanger and generates the offensive zone draw. 1.41 left. So an uh, opportunity here for the Tommies. The offensive zone faceoff coming. Looks like they're going to go with Pepper and Manning. It looks like maybe Piowski will be out there. So again, three different players, three different lines here on this offensive zone draw. Piowski wins the face off to Manning. Back for Piowski. Shot toward the net. Blocked Bacos. Off the window. Kept for a moment. Now Schweitzer with the outlet. Left wing Harrington gains the line offside. Delayed offside. Back the other way comes Manning. Luke Manning down the middle. Shoots one and a save. Langenanger holds. 1.23 to go. We talked about it last night. There are just a couple of seniors on this team right now, but Luke Manning's one of them. It's win or go home time for these seniors on the ultimate level here. These, a loss for the Tommies will be the end of their careers. And so Gower and Manning, the old, and Prokop, should Prokop. add Prokop, the only three that are active in the game. And if there's a poetic player to have the game winner, it'd be Luke Manning, who was here since the D3 days, the longest tenured Tommy. Wallen against Roy. 82 seconds left in regulation. 2-2 game, a lecture for Wallen as he re-enters the dot. And the face-off won by Lake State. It's banked out to neutral. Abrahamson wallops it right back in. Schweitzer plays on the end wall. 75 seconds left. Four checking his Malmquist. Nearly had the steal. Out to Harrington, far wing. Tommy's flip it in. No icing here as Bushy retrieves it. Here's Gleason keeping nicely on the boards. Matthew Gleason at the point. Minutes of play. Rides the line. Shoots toward the net. Just wide. Racing to it, Cheslock. He's on his backhand. He centers to Malmquist. Off his tape. Goes and gets it. Far side of the ice, Malmquist on the right point. Shot off of Schweitzer, in the air, falls down at the feet of Gleason. 40 seconds, Gleason checked by Bushy. Malmquist in the corner. A steal by Schweitzer, shoveled to Venagoni. Venagoni outlet, cleared down through neutral. 27 seconds and Cheslock has it. Looks up for Pullman. 24 to go, here's Poolman in a 2-2 game. Bottom of the circle, revolves behind the cage. Mason Poolman, right point, at the line. It was blocked, two on one, look out. Lewandowski with Rollison. Lewandowski, got it back, right circle. Save made, Tritt scored with six seconds to go. Lake State with the heartbreaker. And the Tommies don't have a challenge in case there was an offside, 6.6 .6 seconds remaining. Well, it was close as Tritt was ahead of the play. I don't know if we can see that one more time, a little bit slower maybe, but uh, that was very close to being offsides, but nothing the Tommies can do about it. And then 
Tripp actually had to play it off his body, brought it down, was able to control it off the rebound for the goal. There's not going to be anything bailing the Tommies out here with 6.6 .6 seconds to go. They trail 3-2. to two. Trotters out. Dawson Tritt scores. Tommies will race after the draw. At center, Manning cleared down toward the empty net. And the buzzer sounds to end the game. Lake Superior State charges back in the third and wins game three. A gut punch for St. Thomas on their home ice as the Lakers mob Ethan Langenanger. And your heart goes out to the short-handed Tommies who scratched and clawed with only 10 forwards in the game. And the Lakers, for the first time this season, win a game that they trailed after two. And what a difficult, difficult way to go out. As hard as this Tommy team worked all series long, first after losing that first period back against the wall, and really everything stacked up against you, and yet you come out and play just a, a complete game yesterday. Had the two to one lead going into the third period. You give up the goal after a power play, not a power play goal, but shortly after a power play. And then the bounce just doesn't go your way in the end. And Trotter makes the save, the puck goes in the air. Tritt's able to recover and bury it with six seconds to go to send Lake Superior State to Bemidji next Saturday night. 3-2 our final. The post-game show to come will have our season-ending chat with Rico Blasi. A tough way for the Tommies to go out. We'll also have our final game stats and put a bow on the season here on the Tommy Sports Network from Learfield.